Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are. Why not WEA, Cal OES logo. Hello and thanks for tuning in to this webcast about the wireless emergency alerts, WEA, also affectionately known as WEA. I'm Sean Boyd with the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Today, really our goal is going to be to show you why these alerts are so important in our state to keep our citizens safe, to dispel any myths associated with them, and most importantly, to encourage you, the local agency, first responders, to sign up today if you haven't done so already. Wireless Emergency Alerts. Sign up today. Visit calalerts.org to find out how. So as Lily Wyatt explains, this is really just a complement to the system, the emergency alert system that's already in existence. With more cell phones than Americans, it's logical emergency personnel view mobile devices as important communication tools to alert people as soon as possible that their lives or property are seriously at risk. That's why the FCC, FEMA, and the wireless industry developed the wireless emergency alerts. WIA allows customers who own wireless phones and other enabled mobile devices to receive geographically targeted text-like messages alerting them of imminent threats to safety in their area. New technology ensures that emergency alerts will not get stuck in highly congested areas, which can happen with standard mobile voice and texting services. There are three different kinds of alerts. Presidential alerts issued by the president, imminent threat alerts that include severe man-made or natural disasters, and AMBER alerts that meet the U.S. Department of Justice's criteria to help law enforcement search for and locate an abducted child. So what are the benefits of WIA? Well, the service is automatic. No need to download an app or sign up. Neither mobile users nor the agency sending these alerts are charged for them. WIA uses a point-to-multipoint -point system, which means alert messages will be sent to those within a targeted area. So even if you're away from home, as long as your cell phone is on and has a signal, you will get the alerts wherever you are, regardless of where the phone is registered. When the alert is sent out, the alert has a unique audible signal and vibration cadence so all consumers, including individuals with disabilities, are aware of the danger. These alerts are no more than 90 characters and include the following information. Who's sending the alert? What is happening? Who is affected? And what action to take? 24 cities and counties across California have already signed up for this service. To double check and see if your phone is set up to receive these alerts on an iPhone 5, you need to go into Settings, Notification Center, and scroll down all the way to the bottom to make sure the alerts are switched to the on position. Of course, this will vary by device manufacturers and carriers. You also have the power to turn this off, but emergency managers really don't recommend it. The goal of this program is to save lives and property as we build a disaster-ready nation. In Sacramento, Lily Wyatt for Cal OES. So we know you have questions and we want to make sure we give you the answers to those questions right now. And what you can do is email us at questions at caloes.ca.gov. One more time questions at caloes.ca.gov and we'll get back to you right away. Now, officially available in April of 2012, there are already a number of success stories across the state and the country, believe it or not, on how WIA has saved people's lives, many of them. Now recently I took a trip to San Diego to meet with the folks over there at the Weather Service uh, to see just how these alerts have been sent out and how they're saving lives. Scenes of a flash flood and police officers helping people at the Boston Marathon. Whether it's a missing child, a terrorist threat, or the weather, wireless emergency alerts, or WEA, can save lives, as many of the warning systems already in use do. A loud warning, EAS test. This is a nationwide test of the emergency alert system. There is no actual emergency. 
but most of those require you to be tuned into the TV or the radio or logged onto the net. The power of the wireless emergency alert system is that you don't need any of that. All you need is a smartphone, which 61% of us have. The National Weather Service in San Diego began testing and using WIA in 2012. Since then, it's issued more than 140 flash flood warnings alone. It took just minutes for mountain roads to be transformed into rivers of mud Sunday afternoon. It's, it's working as it should. Uh, when we put it out to a certain area, it goes to that certain area. WEA allows the National Weather Service to use cell towers to target who gets their warnings for flash floods, tornadoes, dust storms, and tsunamis. Now keep in mind that these emergency alerts are specific to the highest threat area, meaning that here at Mission Beach, if a tsunami was expected to come ashore, only those folks here, the tourists and the residents, would be the ones to actually get those alerts. Alex Tardy shows us how they do it. So flash flood warning is up here. We go down here and we say, well, how long? And then did public report flash flooding? Did Doppler radar report flash flooding? Did um, the media report flash flooding? They, they pick all those messages in there and then they hit create text. Once they write the message, the next step is to select the geographical boundaries for the WIA warning. It's as simple as drawing a box around it. Then hit send. Once they hit send, they don't do anything else. He says it's not perfect, but it's getting there. The concern right now is that it goes out to a larger population beyond that impacted, potentially impacted area. But the benefits far outweigh any concerns, including the challenges of determining who would issue any alerts and communication between those agencies. And they do work, work in coordination with local jurisdictions so that there is a coordinated effort to ensure the messaging is appropriate and proper for that area. And the WIA system works beyond weather warnings. Law enforcement is finding more and more uses for it, especially for Amber Alerts. We approved itself with the Yuba City PD in June. You know, in my 16 year career in law enforcement, this was the best I've ever seen. Shauna Pavey is talking about how, in record time, a wireless emergency alert helped catch a man whom police believed kidnapped three children. To have a situation where the first time we really had an active Amber Alert system come out on this and have such a positive result, to have three children return safely within five minutes is just phenomenal. Around here in Yuba City, Gurinder Judy is Hero of the Year. I didn't even believe it. <laughs> I was like, what? He got the WIA warning, an Amber Alert for three missing kids. He knew instantly it was serious. There has to be something, you know, about it, you know. It's totally different. i never seen anything on the phone like that before, right? And the timing was impeccable, and so was Judy's awareness. He got a good look at the plate, and it was a match. I was like a, I was like a numb, you know. I was like, what? Then, you know, that's when I called 911. Five minutes later, cops had the suspect boxed in and under arrest. We have performed beyond expectation, and Yuba PD is sold on its capability and potential. Well, from a law enforcement perspective, this increases your eyes in the community exponentially. We can save lives, and it just may have on that day back in June, with a little help from an alert citizen. If people are aware, you know, if they know what's going on, you know, around the surroundings, you know, I think that thing works. AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and Verizon are just a few of the wireless companies who are participating in WIA, which is the result of a unique public-private partnership between the FCC, FEMA, and the wireless industry to enhance public safety. Now, in 1997, the emergency alert system was designed for the president to speak to the American people within 10 minutes of a national emergency. Since then, both the federal and state governments alike have been working on making improvements to these alerts. Now, the wireless emergency alerts were formerly known as the Commercial Mobile Alert System, and prior to that, as the Personal Localized Alerting Network. So let's discuss how we at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services can help you with these alerts. Joining me now to answer those questions are a number of folks here that we work with day in and day out. We're talking about OES Inland Regional Administrator, Eric Lamoureux. We have Fire Chief 
uh, Kim Zagaris, who is uh, also a rescue and fire chief, I think is the official title, and then Mark Pazin, who is uh, our uh, chief uh, from law enforcement. So uh, we're going to start with, um, first of all, I do want to thank you guys for being here, taking time out of your, your busy days. You guys, these guys are incredibly busy. So what we want to do, first of all, is talk with Eric. Eric, now you uh, have uh, obviously very dialed in to this WIA system. And I guess my first question to you would be, as a manager, as, a, as an emergency manager, you know, how do you find that WIA uh, is beneficial during or prior to uh, any kind of disaster? Well, you know, WIA, Sean, is, it's just the latest addition to our alert and warning toolbox. Uh, just as we've always been able to uh, get notifications of imminent threats out to folks through the EAS system to their televisions and radios, now we have the ability to add to that the ability to, to get out to folks on their wireless devices. So it's really a key tool. Absolutely. And uh, I would assume the same kind of holds true for you, Chief Zagaris. It yeah. does. Uh, WIA actually help the fire and rescue and other first responders to be able to get out to notify the public of danger, uh, either to them or their property. Could be uh, during fires, hazmat event, could also be during uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, other uh, weather-related incidences, or it could be something as a, a multi-casualty accident out on the highway, or it could be a terrorism event or some other type of disaster. Okay, and uh, Chief Pazin, uh, with you, I would imagine the first thing that comes to your mind would be possibly Amber Alerts. Exactly, Sean. Uh, with WIA, the Wireless Emergency Alert System, it now complements an already in place and successful alert system in the Amber Alert. So many successes with the Amber Alert System, we now can complement this with WIA. And also, I would also like to add with my counterparts that this sponsored governmental agency alert system will enhance the capabilities of not only a person, but a person's family in case of a disaster or some type of emergency that they are involved in or have witnessed. So it's a win-win for everybody. The story that we saw just a, a moment ago actually showed one of those uh, families who benefited uh, from that Amber Alert, went right to that guy's uh, cell phone, alerted him, it caught his attention, and boom, he was able to make the call. He didn't ignore it. He got that call and sent that exactly. call 911. Okay, uh, Eric. So we've got a number of agencies, many of them, in fact, too many, uh, in California who haven't registered yet for WIA. Why? Why is it important for these folks to register for WIA? Well, it, you know, it, 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 it's a tremendous asset for us. You know, we've we've historically uh, been very successful with the emergency alert system, hitting TVs and radios. But now we can hit those folks that are traveling through our communities. And when we've got a threat, it's important that we can reach as broad an audience as possible. Uh, we want to hit everybody. We don't want to get folks that are just listening on their radio or their television. We want to get folks that have their wireless devices. Recently, I was traveling through the Central Valley on business and got an alert of a, a hazardous dust storm uh, that the National Weather Service uh, believed was going to be uh, blowing through the valley. And, you know, that's really critical, uh, especially if, you know, you're sensitive to those types of conditions or if it's a hazardous condition that we don't want folks driving through. So it's just a great new additional asset mm -hmm. uh, to allow to, to get the broadest reach possible. And in fact, a lot of those folks who uh, are out there in some of these uh, rural communities are, are in ag, and they may be out working uh, the fields or something, and it would benefit them to know that there was a dust storm on the way. Yeah, the tool, uh, the wireless emergency alert system, allows us to target wireless devices. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that people don't don't disconnect that we uh, uh, service off their phone. It's a, it's a service that's already there, it's mm -hmm. available, it's gonna alert your device uh, so long as, as, you, as you keep it active. And it doesn't cost them anything. Nothing it's there, all. it's already good to go. So uh, Chief Zagaris, a um, lot of fires uh, so far this season. We've had a little bit of a lull right now, which is nice. Um, any of these uh, fires involve uh, a WIA alert? Has, has it been utilized for any of those fires? Actually, uh, this year we're not aware of any time that's been used for any of the wildland fires that we've experienced. Um, but I see actually for the future it being a very uh, useful tool um, out there. And I think as Eric was just talking about, so many people you know, in the old days would listen to the radio or, or would wait for, you know, we'd, we'd call their, uh, their, their landlines back in, back in the days. So many people are using you know, a, a cell phone today, a smart device. We can actually send it out and be able to get a hold of people. Just in a wildland fire, we never know exactly 
who's out and what they're doing, whether they're camping, hiking, whatever type of recreational activity they may be doing, you can surely bet they're probably going to carry their, their uh, cellular phone. And if they are, and if we've got connectability, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to reach them and send that message to them with any threat or danger uh, so they're more aware of what's going on around them. Chief Pays, I'm curious. You were a sheriff back in the day before you came to Cal OES. Was WIA or any form of that used back then when you were there? If not, would it have helped in any situation? You know, as Sheriff of Merced County, uh, with Cal OES, the money that we got from those grants, we were able to put in the reverse 911. Mm. And you got to bear in mind, uh, even though we've been going through a drought here in California, and thank goodness the rains have come, uh, we had a series of floods. We had a series of other fires in the Central Valley area. I cannot emphasize enough to Sean and to you and our viewers just how critically important the technological advancement of both the Amber Alert, WIA, the Reverse 91, all these put together the perfect trifecta to enhance public safety. And that's what we're trying to emphasize here. So with all those little, um, I would submit to you, arrows in our quiver, mm -hmm. we're able to use that. And with the enhancement of WIA, again, it's all about public safety and the usability and the advancement of such. Absolutely. Eric, uh, Ro yeah, go ahead. So Sean, um, Chief Pazin talks about the reverse 911. It's a tool that a lot of local governments use to get notifications out to residents that have subscribed to that service. And where WIA complements that is you now have the ability to hit other folks that are traveling through that community. So the reverse 911 systems are incredibly robust. They get out to the residents that have signed up, but they miss those folks that may be traveling or, or uh, tourists in a particular community. We've got a lot of those locations throughout the state. Now, a moment ago, I may have misspoken to a certain degree. Uh, I said that if, if you don't get uh, a wireless signal, uh, you don't have, you say you have bad cell coverage, that you may not get that that alert, but from what I understand, that is possible that to, to get some kind of alert, right? Well, there's concerns, I think, by some folks that the congestion will result in them not getting the alert, and that's not the case. Um, the alerts will continue to go through uh, regardless of any congestion that may be occurring. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have anything else that they want to add? Um, the whole point here is that there are too many agencies that haven't signed up yet. It seems like a no-brainer. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Well, Sean, the only thing that I, we can collectively emphasize is about public safety. See something, you get the alert. Uh, again, as Eric had mentioned and Chief Segaris had mentioned, uh, between Amber Alert, between Reverse 911, and with the WIA, there's no reason not to be informed. And again, as uh, I mentioned earlier in our conversation, uh, the technological advancements are there and the public needs to use them, not only for themselves, but their neighbors and their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we actually need uh, the emergency services community to embrace it and we need the public to embrace it for themselves as individuals, their families and their friends and their loved ones. It really will benefit everybody. I can't imagine in today's day and age when you find out about an event that you don't reach out to, you know, touch all those folks one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, as, as society changes from, you know, how we used to listen to radio and TV and people, you know, are on the Internet, listening to the, not listening to the radio, maybe they've got an iPod or some other device, uh, or they don't have landlines. Just about everybody you look at anymore has got uh, a smart device, some type of cellular capability. So it, it's really, you know, one of those things we need to embrace uh, as citizens of the state and as a nation. Uh, it, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. Why would you not? All right. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here. Really thank appreciate you. you taking the time out and getting that message out. It's really important. All right. So we want to thank you guys as well. Now, listen, we're going to have uh, some folks standing by their emails, looking for emails to come in. Again, it's questions at caloes.ca.gov. Those questions will be answered by any one of these experts. Anyone, if they can't answer the question, we'll get it figured out one way or another and we'll get it back to you. So be sure to send us those questions. But before we go, a quick recap. WIA is a federal initiative which began in June of 2012. WIA warnings include three types, presidential alerts, imminent threat alerts, and amber alerts. And here are the governments that can send WIA warnings. Federal agencies, state governments, territorial governments, and tribal governments, as well as local governments. 
and you'll need to buy incident management software. And for the public, WIA messages are free. They are automatic with no apps to download, and they look most like notifications when they come in, which, by the way, you should not disable. And we can't forget the CHP and Caltrans for letting us invade their communication center. It was critical for us to have this facility uh, to get this message out. Thanks. Take care. Why not WEA?